Okay, so what I'd like to do is introduce the idea of the, the, the geometric setting is the second kind of random variable we're interested in. We just finished talking about the binomial distribution in the previous in the previous videos. Um, geometric setting, it's going to start off, it's going to sound just like I'm talking about the binomial. So let's talk about some of its requirements. Number one, every observation is either a success, could be called a success or a failure. Okay, um, so for example, I'm shooting a basket. Either I get the basket or I don't. Uh, number two, the asteroids are independent, so that um, if you get the first basket, it has no effect on, on the likelihood of getting the basket in the second time. Uh, number three, the probability of success on each trial is the same, it's P. So this sounds just like the binomial distribution, except here comes the new part. The variable of interest now is the number of trials required to obtain the first success. So let's talk about how this is different from from the binomial distribution. I'll start with an example. So suppose we said, um, what's the, oh, we're going to say this, we're going to let x equal the number of shots attempted until Matt scores. We'll say scores. Okay. So if you think about this, this sounds like we're waiting for a success to occur, and that's exactly what's happening. So um, if I ask questions like this, what's the probability that x equals 3? What that means is, what's the probability that the third shot I make is the shot that I get in? So in other words, this is really saying, what's the probability I miss a shot, I miss a shot, and I make a shot? Okay. If I said, what's the probability that x is greater than 3? And that's really saying, what's the probability it takes more than um, three shots to get a score, to get the first score, I should say. All right. Um, so let's, let's consider uh, an example. So let's, let's actually take this example a little bit further. Let's say that the probability, and let's pretend it's me making the shot here, I'm not very good, is, is 0.3 that I'm going to make any particular basket. And x is, again, going to equal the number of shots until I make my first basket. So that would be the like the following. And if we think about, I, I, I'd say, I think about what the values of x could be. Um, here's x and here's p of x. Well, let's see. Um, I could make it in the first time. So that would be the first value of x I can have. Right? Or I might miss the first time and make it the second time. So x could be 2. Or I might miss the first two and make the third. And so on. And here's where the big difference between the binomial distribution and the geometric distribution occurs. In this problem, um, really, there's no maximum value for x. It can continue to go forever. It might be, be very unlucky, but I might not make a shot for a very long time. OK. And just like in the binomial setting, if we want, we can find the probabilities that go in here. So on the first shot, my probability of, of getting this in is just going to be 0.3. All right. And the second shot, that's where things get a little bit interesting. So if we think about this for a minute. Probability that x equals 2 would mean the following. It would say I missed the first shot and made the second. So the probability I missed the first is 0.7. And the probability I make the second is 0.3. So 0 0.7 times 0.3 is 0.21. That's how you get the probability that goes there. Right, let's, let's consider a few more cases, and then we'll come up with a general formula. In this case, that's the probability that x equals 3. If you think about that, well, um, I would have to miss the first shot. I would have to miss the second shot, and then get the third shot in. So there's that probability, which is about 0.147. Okay. One more, and I think we'll get the idea. Here, if we want the probability that x equals 4, then I have to miss three shots. So I'm going to write that in a more compact way. I'm going to say I miss three times, and then I make it. Now, I don't know what that is in my head. So it's time to start resorting to the calculator. But some very similar things or are, are functions are in the calculator for the geometric distribution as the functions were for the uh, normal or the binomial distribution. So let me show you how that works. 
If you go to the calculator and you do second distributions, you get this menu again. And if you go up, and what do you know? Right away, what do you see? The geometric CDF, the geometric PDF. So these things do what you think they do. So the geometric PDF finds the probability that x equals exactly one particular number. So hit enter on that. And now we've got to give things a little bit of thought for the geometric PDF. If you think about it, there is no fixed n because we don't know what the number of trials are going to be until I get the first basket. So the geometric, um, I should be careful here, the geometric PDF does not require an n. You start with p, that's the first thing you put in, and then you put in k, where k equals the trial on which you want to have your first success. So this is the probability that x equals k. So for the case we're trying to figure out, we're trying to figure out when x equals 4 here, we're going to go back to this. We're going to say the probability of me getting a shot in was 0.3, comma, 4, because I want to get it in on the fourth shot. And there it is. Close parenthesis. Enter. And there's our exact probability, 0 0.1029. OK. 0.1029. All right, and then we can continue to do that. All right. So what else can you do? Well, guess what? You can also create a histogram of the geometric probability uh, distribution. So let's do that. We'll go to stat edit for a moment, and we'll make sure we put our variables in here. Now, let's go over here. This is left over from the last problem I did, which is in another video where it was a binomial distribution, and the family had exactly five children. And then we were interested in the number of kids out of five that had type O blood. But the problem we're looking at, this shooting baskets problem, we think about it, x can't be 0. It doesn't really make any sense because it can't be that I take no shots and get, get one in. I have to take at least one shot. So here we go. 1, enter. 2, enter. And here's where it starts to get a little, you might get a little nervous. Like, well, what do I type next? Right? Because here I'm, up, I'm on to 4. Oh, hold on a minute there. 4, calculator's acting up on me here. Or enter, five, enter, six, enter. And then you realize, wait a minute, I could keep doing this for a very long time. I could just keep typing this. So what do I do? Well, I have to make a decision to stop somewhere. I'm going to stop at this six. I'm going to hit the up out here. I'm going to go to the top of list two. And here we go. I'm going to take advantage of the calculator function. Hit clear, get rid of that stuff. Top of list two, I'm going to do second distributions. And then I'm going to go up to the geometric PDF. And for the whole problem, the problem we're getting it in is going to stay at 0.3. So that could go there. That's not going to change. But my x value is going to change according to list 1. So we do second, list 1, close parenthesis, enter. And here are all my probabilities. And you'll notice there's the familiar numbers. There's the 0.3, the 0.21, the 0.147, the 0.1029, and so forth. Um, before we create this, this, this graph, you should ask yourself, um, is this thing going to be skewed left, skewed right, or symmetric? And what you notice is the biggest probabilities here are with the smallest values of x. And the smaller probabilities happen as x gets bigger and bigger. That leads me to believe that the histogram will be um, shorter or not as tall when x gets bigger. So probably skewed right. Let's see what happens. Second stat plot. Here we are. It's set up from before. List 1, list 2. So that's good. You want to make sure you select the histogram. okay? And then your x list is in L1, and your y list, or your frequency list, is in L2. That's your probabilities. Again, if you press zoom 9, this isn't going to do well for you. All right? You're going to get this misleading graph. So to fix that, we go to Window, and our x min should be 1. That's the smallest value of x. Our x max, in this case, think about it. We had an x value of 6 in stat edit. We're going to go to 7. We always go one more than that. And here's the most important thing to do, your x scale. Your x scale should be 1 in these, uh, in these binomial and geometric distribution problems. Okay? The biggest probability I had was a 0.3. So I'm going to go with a y max of, say, like, point, you could go with 0.5 or 0.7 or something like that. That should be enough. Press graph. I'll get a look at this histogram. And wouldn't you know it, um, you have a skewed right distribution, just like we, we talked about, we thought was going to occur. You can see that here, skewed right. 
Um, here's the fun part. If you think about this, you shouldn't be surprised at all. This first bar had a height or a probability of 0.3. And to get the next bar, the height of that bar was 0.7 times 0.3 or 0.21. To get the height of the bar after that, it was 0.7 times 0.7 times 0.3. Or, let's think of it this way, 0.7 times the height of the previous bar, which is 0.21. So that's how that height came back. This was 0.21. This was 0.147. So what we're noticing is, is that each bar is 70% the height of the previous bar. And that's always going to happen in geometric distribution. You can always expect these distributions to be skewed right. Okay? Lastly, they do have a mean and they do have a standard deviation. The mean of a geometric random variable is always 1 over the probability of success. Um, the standard deviation is less obvious. It's the square root of 1 minus p over p. Okay, thanks for watching.